What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. So you want that sweet, sweet tech income, but you have no clue how to get there because you don't have any experience. I'm gonna show you the exact steps I use to land a tech job with no experience. I'm Matt, a software developer, and in 2017, I learned to code and got a job in San Francisco six months after the day that I started. This was not easy at all, but I'm gonna share all the tips that I learned to help you get there. In the end, I'm gonna show you a free website where you can get virtual experience, which is like a mini internship. You can put these experiences on your resume as certifications and they're completely free. Companies have hired out of this program and it makes it two to five times more likely to land a job. So with that, please hit that like button and let's hop right in. So the most important thing to know is that the job search is a balance of quantity versus quality. You wanna make sure your algorithm skills are solid, your projects are polished, but you also wanna make sure to be applying to enough jobs. And this is probably more than you think. I went to a coding bootcamp and the cohort of people I went with all of us applied to around 150 to 300 jobs. A majority of us got those jobs, but it did take a lot of effort and it was a lot more than a lot of us thought. Luck does play a role in the job search as with anything, but you can directly influence your luck by focusing on quantity and quality. Next up is leak code and algorithm questions. So leak code has a set of top interview questions that I'd highly recommend you do. You might not like leak coding and I'm not sure many people actually do, but it is a part of the job process and it's a necessary evil. There are plenty of other great resources though, like cracking the coding interview Algo Expert, Hacker Rank, and more. I dropped a free interview guide and a bunch of resources to help you learn and crack those algorithm questions in the description below. Next up is that you have to gamify the process to make it more fun. The job search is the most grueling part of the whole process. Honestly, it's really not that fun and it can get pretty lonely, so anything that can make it a little more fun is a plus in my book. Personally, I shot for around 10 to 25 applications a day and used an app like Habitica, which is a fun kind of like RPG habit tracker to make the process much more fun. But anything to gamify the process, even like giving yourself a small reward after doing some tasks helps a ton. Now for the part where you're gonna start to build your funnel. In the job search, you need to be connecting to people. That's extremely important. Networking is a huge part of this process. These were the things that I found most effective. Number one is cold email outreach. I had a rule that for every resume I threw into the black hole of some automated system, I would also reach out to a real person at that company. You can use free tools like Clearbit Connect or Hunter.io to find people who work at these companies. Once you get their email, you can send them a quick message to see if they have any open roles. I dropped a handful of free email templates too in the description so you can use these in your job search. After that, we have LinkedIn. It's definitely worth at least sending some DMs on LinkedIn. You can get a free trial of pre which includes in mail if you've never tried it before. And you can search by location, company name, person name, what school they went to. There are tons of useful tools to find the right people to connect with. I would definitely search for recruiters and engineering managers as those are the two people who are gonna get you hired. But it might be worth asking for referrals from engineers themselves. After that, we have the big company job search boards. These are sites like Indeed, and it's definitely worth at least scraping through to see if you match any of the qualifications for these jobs. They might have contact emails in there for these jobs, but you can also use the tools I talked about previously to find someone's email at that company. And remember, when you apply through these sites, you definitely wanna also be connecting to a person as well. Don't just throw your resume into a black hole. Then you have these startup job boards. This is something like AngelList. AngelList is personally my favorite because you can DM companies directly. This removes the whole process of finding someone's email, emailing them, and maybe not getting a response, but AngelList is built for you to directly contact somebody. Another path to contact people through is your college network, and if you went to a boot camp, that network, and even your high school network. You can do a search on LinkedIn in your network to see if anyone you know works at these companies. You could even also do a search on Facebook and see if people list their companies in their profile that you're friends with. Next up, we have warm leads and referrals. Now, warm leads can come from something like you writing blog posts or you putting content out on the internet. Next up is LinkedIn. If you put out content relevant to your industry, recruiters might find you and reach out to you because of that. Having a personal brand online is super helpful as well for your career, so it's definitely worth at least putting something out there. If you don't like video, even do something like photo or text, it's still worth doing. Now, referrals are huge. It's kind of like a backdoor into a company that not many people utilize. You can find engineers on LinkedIn or you can go to startup events, anything like that where you can contact people and see if you can get a referral that way. It never hurts to ask. Don't be afraid of that. Next is tracking your job search. This is extremely important. You can use something like Google Sheets or a project management tool like Notion to track your whole job search. What I personally did though is I used an extension called Streak. This is not sponsored by them, but I absolutely love Streak. They have a free version available and all it is is a Gmail extension that plugs into your email. You're able to track every stage of every contact you have, whether it's no contact yet or received response, or if you're in the middle of the phone screen or the on-site, whether you got rejected or not. I dropped a free tracker in the description. You can modify and use this with any tool that you'd like. It's just super important to be tracking your job search. 
The one thing I love about Streak is it has snippets as well as mail merge. I have snippets for everything, whether it's I'm reaching out to someone first or they reach out to me and I need to respond. Snippets speed up your process a ton and they're definitely worth using. The nice thing about Streak is it automatically figures out when you last contacted that person so you know when to follow up. It also shows if other people have read your email, so I definitely recommend using a tool like that. We're not done yet, but if you like everything so far, I do offer tech mentorship every single week. We go over everything from job search tips to what projects you should be building and what you should be studying. I have tons of resources like templates to revamp your resume and we'll go over that together. Also, study guides and free tech tools that will help you out a ton. The most important thing is that we go over skills that coding boot camps and courses will not teach you that you need to have for your first job. Having these skills on your resume can also increase your chances a ton to land that first job. So if you're interested, make sure to check that out in the description. The next tip is focus less on cover letters. Since you're already reaching out to people for every job app that you submit, your cover letter can be that first or second email you send to them. I have free templates in the description below for LinkedIn and email outreach. Overall, you wanna focus on things that are actually gonna drive results, which are improving your skills and networking. Spending hours on customizing cover letters really will not do much. So what happens when you get that first phone screen? Ideally, you're only reaching out to jobs that you're actually interested in, so if you get a bite from someone, you wanna go all out on that. After every step of the process, whether it's a phone call or a text screen, you want to be sending a personalized thank you note. After I got my first bite, I sent thank you notes to everyone I came in contact with. I also refactored the code after my text screen and sent them back to them to show initiative. One huge thing that you can do to go above and beyond is just make a few videos on your projects. This can be a simple screen recording with a voiceover and it can be edited on your phone or your laptop just with the native software. Nobody does this and you can put it up on YouTube as an unlisted video and just share the link in either the email or the resume. This shows the interviewer that you're much more than just a blank page like a resume and it shows them that you're a real person and that you have personality. Trust me, they go through resumes all day. If they see something like that, that's definitely going to help you stand out. When you're prepping for the onsite, I definitely recommend practicing with a real person who is familiar with the interview experience. There are great sites like Pramp that will match you with another person so you can interview each other. And honestly, the more practice, the better. You're going to feel a lot better going into an interview if you've had real simulated practice. And once you get to the onsite after all these pieces, this is the most important part. You need to stay calm as calm as you can get. These are really high pressure situations and much harder said than done, but it's not worth stressing out. Overall, you wanna show that you have confidence. You don't wanna be overconfident or underconfident. Just show people that you're confident that you can solve a problem. Now, that doesn't mean you have to get the right answer, but they do wanna see how you think and how you communicate. The on-sites are a two-way street. It's almost like you wanna have a conversation with your interviewer as you're working through a problem. You don't wanna be dead silent throughout the whole thing, solving it in silence. They really wanna see how you think and interact. Before you start coding, you definitely wanna take a step back and plan a little bit and maybe ask your interviewer what they think of your approach. And you definitely wanna ask questions and clarify that there are any assumptions that they've made. And just remember in your head that you do not need to get everything right in the interview. You want to tackle the problem as best as you can, but also clearly communicate to the other person. I can't stress that enough. And overall, think of failure as a stepping stone. Failure should not scare you. It's part of the process to get you that job. Most people do fail the interviews that they get into, and that's okay. This is why it's really important to consistently still be applying to jobs, because even if you fail, you still have ones in the pipeline. So now this is what you've all been waiting for. How do you get experience without having any experience before? It's kind of like a chicken and the egg problem. This is where you can gain virtual work experience for completely free, which is like a mini internship. And no, you're not doing free work for any company, but you're doing a simulated experience that you can put on your resume. So now for the real question, and I wish I had this in college and after my boot camp and the first job search. So the program is called The Forage. They have over 1 million students registered. They have 70 different programs that you can choose from based on your interest. And having one of these experiences on your resume makes you two to five times more likely to land a job. These experiences were set up with real companies to simulate what working there would be like. Those companies include Electronic Arts, JP Morgan, Citibank, and more. And they have different tracks for things like gaming and fintech, and they also have experiences for software development, data science, and more. And the best part is that it's completely free. Companies are dying to find people who have the skills to fill these positions. And they're willing to pay companies like Forge to source that talent. So ultimately, it's a win-win for both sides. Completely free for you, gives you real experience, and increases your chance of landing a job. Now, companies do hire out of this program too, if you do well. These experiences generally last for a few hours to around a day, and they're not a huge time commitment. So if you're pressed on time, these are great. So if you wanna check out the Forge, that link is in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I do answer all DMs on Instagram and TikTok, so make sure to hit me up there with any questions. We also have a huge Discord where you can come in and ask for any kind of tech or career help for free. Hope you found this helpful and see you next time.